first um, got involved with Gaelic Games, the first started playing with Gaelic Games, um, actually in the green in front of my house. Um, we used to play soccer um, on the pitch, just or on the, the grass, kind of just in front of our house. One of the days, one of um, my friend's dads came out and was kind of like, what are you doing playing soccer? Have you ever played GA? Would nobody ever teach you to play GA? Um, so he kind of showed us a few of the rules and I just thought it was really exciting. I really liked it. Um, and then in primary school, one of our teachers mentioned that the local club, um, St. Bridget's, was starting up their, their first girls team. Um, so this would have been probably in about uh, 2000, 2001, um, which kind of shows, I suppose, just how far it's come really since then. That was only the first year the, the women's team was being set up. Um, and that was the first time that I started. So that, that, that year then I went down and I joined the under 12s team um, from there, which is, you know, would be kind of a late starting now, I suppose, if you think about it. But um, yeah, and then I suppose my earliest memory of going to, to GAA matches was with my uncle. Um, he brought us to, to watch a Dublin versus Kildare match, I think, in Croke Park. It was one of the Leinster, um, I don't know if it was a final or a semi-final, but um, my, <laughs> my biggest memory is that there was a draw match. And I couldn't understand that we went home and that we didn't automatically get tickets to the replay. I, was like, I felt like I'd been cheated because there was no results. But um, yeah, so they were my two earliest memories. Well, first off, my dad would have probably been a, a huge influence on me. Um, he would have brought me out um, kind of kick practicing and any time I wanted to, to practice my kicks, he, he'd, he'd always be, you know, willing to bring me out and, and, and give time. Um, moving on then, I suppose, underage, um, we were lucky enough at, at minor level to have Martina Farrell, who would have previously been at, at Dublin um, ladies captain. She, you know, she won the first uh, Leinster championship with Dublin. She's a captain that year and she was involved Um with our minor team and it was just a massive influence on me I think she gave me an awful lot of belief in my capabilities and what I could achieve um and really coached me really well I was supposed to play to my strengths and to use my strengths my speed and things like that um so she would have been a massive influence on me and then um I suppose I've been lucky enough as well to play with an awful lot of the same group of girls since since I was um under 14 since we first started playing Dublin together Sinead Goldrick and Eve McAvoy um, Fiona Hudson we all kind of came up through the ranks together and played senior together so they've you know been a massive influence on me as well throughout my career it's been great to kind of have that constant support and constant um, I suppose structure and, and uh, company as well coming up we all made those steps together so it was nice to kind of have that comfort. So as mentioned, the under-14 team was the first time I played with Dublin. Um, I don't actually remember when I got the call. I think my club manager at that stage might have just contacted me or contacted my dad to say, you know, would I be willing to come and join the team or go for trials? Um, and I think the first match we played would have been a friendly. It's probably the first time I put on the Dublin jersey was a friendly um, in Westmanstown um, against Mayo. But um, I think when we first got called up to the senior team, we actually all got letters to our houses, which probably shows kind of the, again, the change in how long ago that was uh, in 2006. So the incoming manager, Jerry McGill, sent a letter to, to I, I suppose, um, everybody that he kind of thought would have potential in, in coming on the team and had a big development team. So, yeah, that's something that, you know, I don't even think, I don't think I have any more of a support it, but I remember just like reading it and being like, it's definitely the seniors. It definitely, like, are you sure it's not just the minors? Um, so yeah, that was you know that was a massive moment, um, and I was lucky enough to have a few appearances in the league. I think I made my first um, senior debut against Sligo um, in the league. It was a match away. I actually started as a wing back um, that day, but uh, yeah, thankfully that didn't last too long. I quickly found my way back up into the forwards. The first time that I visited Croke Park was um, as I previously mentioned with my uncle. It was a, a championship provincial match um that I went with to to watch um Dublin play Kildare but um my first like I have a very kind of vague memory of it my first proper memory of, of probably going to like a, a big serious match in Crow Park was that my dad brought me to I think the ladies all Ireland final it was Mayo versus Monaghan um my parents are both from Mayo they're both mad about Gaelic football so kind of any it was any hint <laughs> any hint of success that Mayo might have they you know they're they're keen to be involved and keen to support so I think he probably knew the influence that that would have on me you know in fairness he recognized that the importance of having you know female role models and looking up and, and, and seeing females um footballers playing in you know in, in you know what's in my opinion you know the greatest stadium that we have so 
um that was really exciting and to kind of to watch you know to, to watch your team win to watch Mayo win that day and to kind of I suppose to get to witness players like Horace Staunton um uh, performing that day was 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 phenomenal yeah and I suppose you know little did I know I suppose that time the impact that would have on me we played coming up on school which would be the primary schools competition um and actually we had a pretty good camogie team we had an okay football team we had a better camogie team so my first ever match that I played in Crow Park was actually in the newly renovated it was I think it might have been one of the first matches that have been played um so we played across the pitch in Crow Park in a, in a camogie match um I unfortunately didn't have very good camogie skills so uh, in the first 10 minutes I went to kick I went to kick the slither and somebody came in with their with their hurl and hit my foot and that kind of put pay to my Crow Park debut but um I remember just you know for ages afterwards you know I couldn't believe I was telling everybody you know like yeah I played in Crow Park I, I played a match in Crow Park you know we got into the dressing rooms our whole school came along and cheered us on it was phenomenal and even at that age you know to, to get on the pitch and feel how dwarfed you are on the pitch by the stadium was you know absolutely phenomenal. If someone had said to me the first time I, I put on the Dublin jerseys, the first time I played with Dublin, the journey that I would have gone on from there, um, and thankfully the successes, the experiences, um, you know the, so it's the experiences both good and bad, um, that I would have been able to enjoy and experience in 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 a Dublin jersey, I would have absolutely bitten their hand off. I mean, for me, just getting on an under fourteen team was such a big achievement. Um, you know, I couldn't believe that I was lucky enough to be considered um capable um to, to play for Dublin to represent Dublin and then um you know to to win an All Ireland with our under 14 team as well just seemed so phenomenal and then as you know as as it, as it went on um you know we were lucky enough to to win again at under 14 under 16 and we you know we had such a strong bond with the girls that we played with um the likes of yeah Sinead Goldrick and Neve Bakavoy and to have kind of made the journey then onto senior I think you know if you said looking around that dressing room at under 14 that the, the girls in that room would would have achieved what they had with Dublin I don't think any of us would have believed it um so yeah like looking back it's just it's it's phenomenal to to phenomenal to think that it's that it's all happened you know I I've I've said it before it's it's really beyond anything that I would have ever um dreamed would have happened you know you, you dream about playing in Crow Park on an all Ireland final day and to have gotten to experience that as many times as I did even the losses um you know were all fantastic memories and you know to to then have finally finally won as well was was just phenomenal and to I suppose to got to experience it um as many times as I did was just and you know to 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 have experience it with my family as well and to you know share those moments with them as well it's just you know it's I'm so thankful that I've kind of made those memories and to be able to any time that you go back into Crow Park to be able to kind of recall those days is yeah it would almost put hairs up on the back of your neck like it's yeah it's, it's just amazing. And so I suppose for us the kind of preparation would have really started the week before so obviously All-Ireland final day is a little bit different you've your normal warm up and then you do the parade around the, the stadium, you meet the president. So there's a lot to kind of get through before you you throw in and it's kind of a lot to contend with that would be different from your normal your normal warm up. So in 2010 Martin Kennedy came in and kind of, you know, I think was really ahead of ahead of the game in terms of that and went through everything with us. We had an A the our A team and our B team. We were playing Tyrone that year. So the you know the the girls in the A team had their Dublin jerseys on and we borrowed jerseys from my club which is St Bridget's who wear red and white and you know they had red and white on we went out at exactly the same time that um we were going to go out with we warmed up in exactly the same dimensions of of a area that we would have warmed up in in the warm-up room we met the president one of our um kit men pretended to be the president came around and met everybody we paraded around and we timed everything out so there was nothing that was going to shock us that day um and that's something that we kind of inherited then um and did for every All Ireland that we came that we came to um the following year for the week before. So, you know, we had a we had a trial match the the, the week the week before at the exact same time, just so you get everything right. So you get all your, you know, your your food timing right and everything like that. Um on the morning of the of the All Ireland final, we obviously all stay at home the night before because we live in Dublin. So um there is usually a banquet dinner afterwards and it's you know it's very strict that you have your dress and your heels in your bag for training on Friday and that's already dealt with. We usually meet um generally in DCU probably 
two hours or so beforehand, have a little bit of food together. Um, if it suits your timing, usually have a meeting and go through tactics. And that's something that we do for every match. So kind of what we try to do is not to upset our rhythm too much. Because I think if you if you start to change things around and start to make it into a big occasion, sometimes you can buy into it and it can kind of just feed into the nerves a little bit. So we try to keep everything as normal as we would from what we would have called match one to match five or match six, which would be the, the kind of last match of the season. But there's obviously things that are that little bit different. Um, the main thing being is that you get a police escort from wherever you're, um, you know, wherever you're you're leaving from, wherever you're getting on the bus all the way to Croke Park. So for us, it was only a small 10 minute journey, journey. But, you know, it's strange. You kind of leave your very isolated and your very protected area in DCU where you've, you know, you've everything set. Everything's the same. There's nothing different. And then you get on the bus, the nerves start, you hear the you know the Garda siren start up the bus flies you see them flying on and you know we kind of take the route up from from DCU through Glasnevin up Dorset Street so you're kind of getting closer and closer to Croke Park and all of a sudden you know you might see one or two supporters and then you see a few more supporters and then you start seeing you know kind of streets of them and they've all their their flags and they spot the bus and they're waving and you know at that stage it kind of starts to feel that little bit different and then you go under the you know into the into the bellows I suppose of, of, of Croke Park and get your bag out there's, there's um, video cameras you know TG Cahar are there and you know you can hear the noise from outside because there's a few matches on beforehand the intermediate they're playing you can kind of start to feel the sense of Croke Park and you know you, you go into the changing room and there's usually a good bit of nervous energy around but I kind of what I like to do and if you was like to do is just go out you know you can sit up into the crowd if you want so I kind of like to go out and just get a sense of the crowd at that stage see how the, see how the pitch is going is there a bounce of the ball does it look like it's cutting up does it look slippy you know you're still kind of deciding at that stage really where it studs or moldies but um then yes yeah, it's, it's it's back into the into the dressing room and uh into the warm-up area and you know, you do. You only have a certain amount of time on the pitch in, in Croke Park because obviously they need to time it between the the, the medal presentation, the, the cup presentation previously, and then um to allow them to have their celebrations and and to get out. So it's usually only twenty minutes. So you can't really do much of your of, of your normal warm up out there. So you know, you're in you're in a room that's probably, I'd say maybe. 13 meters by six meters across. There's 30 people in there. You know, it gets warm. There's an awful lot of nervous energy, but uh. Yeah, you know, by the time you're finished that warm, you're just ready to burst out, um, burst out under the tunnel. And like, I think what's one of the really special things about ladies football final in Crow Park is the vast, vast majority of the people who attend are young, you know, young female footballers who are, you know, maybe attending their first ever All-Ireland final. So the noise is massive. Um, and it's kind of the one thing that hits you. It's just this absolute wall of noise as you walk out and will run out usually in, in, in most cases. And it's like a feeling I've never, you know, you know, ever experienced before. It's just that rush of noise and adrenaline. It's, you know, it's 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 great fun, really. But uh, it can be, you know, the first time you do it, it can be a little bit intimidating. And I suppose that's kind of the one benefit of, you know, getting to experience it a, a few times. You kind of get into your rhythm, you know what to expect. Um, and it's something that I kind of think I, I helped. I used to probably just get a little bit too nervous and try to stay too focused the whole time and get the get the warm up perfect and stay in the zone all the time. But, um, you know, as, as I went on, I kind of found up you, you a little bit too wound up almost doing that. So, you know, I just remember in 2017, just being so relaxed, going through my warm up, getting a bit of a, you know, a bit of a touch and a bit of a feeling and then just really enjoying, um, really enjoying the parade and walking around. It was the first time in, in 2017 that they'd opened the, the upper, the upper tier um, for a ladies football final. So the canal end or the, sorry, the Cusack stadium trade across was completely full and I never would have even dreamed that I would have played in a Crow Park that was that full you know there was 45,000 people um so I just you know walking around parading around the sun shining flags you know blaring it was just it was brilliant it's really you know I think it's one thing that I'm really glad that I was able to to kind of temper and take in um as the years went on and just really enjoy and kind of I suppose treasure um those moments and those feelings and kind of take take all the sights and the sounds in of it because you know it can go past you very quickly and you know it's it's a, it's a day that can get away from you very quickly as well so I'm really glad that I was kind of able to able to, to take those in um for the past few years
the dress rooms in Croke Park, I suppose, before an All-Ireland final, it's a really special place. There's an awful lot of kind of nervous energy going around. Um, the first thing that I like to do when I got in Croke Park is I'd obviously put my bag down, you know, t- take a look at the jersey because it's a jersey you get to, it's a, it's a, you know, a special jersey you have for the All-Ireland final. It's one that you get to keep as well, which I think is really special. Um, and then to, I like to go out um, and just take in a sense of, of the stadium as well, kind of the intermediate matches on. So kind of just temper the nerves a little bit by going out and sitting in, getting a sense of the crowd, um, you know, having a look at the pitch, seeing, you know, is it does it look like a good bounce of the ball? Does it look like the, the girls are slipping or not? Um, and then after that, get in and just do your kind of usual personal mobilisation that you need to do. Um, and then eventually, you know, have a quiet word with a few people. But you try not to change, I suppose, your your routine too much from from what you would before matches. Cause, you know, you don't wanna, you don't want to build up the nerves or try to treat the matches anything that'll be different either. Um, there's a warm up room then in 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 Crow Park just beside the changing rooms, which is astroturf on it. Um, there'd usually be a few people in there. We usually um our stats man would have put on um some music um he'd have kind of a special playlist that we get going and then we usually do a group mobilization that would start off very slowly just kind of deep breathing together um then you know some just some hip mobilization some activation stuff then eventually it would kind of build slowly and one of the mu- same music that we always play would be um insomnia so that kind of if you ever listen to it it builds and it builds and it builds and it builds and i just you know we you do like this fast feet and this quick jumping reaction and I just remember, you know, getting there, you just feel the energy building and building and the music building to this crescendo. And you're just, you know, by the end of it, your your muscles are fired. You're ready to go. You've got, you know, your your, your first wind gone. You're ready to just burst out the door. Um, there's usually one or two kind of quiet words from from either, you know, Mick um, or Greg and then from, from Sinead or Lindsay or um, Goldie, whoever, you know, myself as well, who would have been captain throughout the day, um, throughout the years. And then it's just straight onto the pitch. Um, yeah, but it's it, it is it's a really special place beforehand. There's so much excitement, um, you know, a bit of nerves, but you know, there's just kind of that that quiet nod to everyone. You know, you're kind of glad you're here. You're ready to go. Um, yeah, it's it's it is it's a really really special place. I've been lucky enough that I've got I I think I've played in nine All Ireland finals at senior level, so. You know, I played in 2009, 2010 when I probably would have been very inexperienced and just really kind of happy to be there and kind of happy to come along and, you know, on, on a sub and hoping to, to get, you know, a few a few minutes and, and be able to have a bit of an impact. Um, Came back as more of an established player in the team then 2014 and 15. And I think I almost probably got myself too nervous or too hyped up beforehand. I think I thought that I had to just be ready to go and, you know, full of energy, just ready to explode as soon as I got in the pitch and, I think sometimes you'd almost expend too much energy, you know, the nervous energy would kind of almost drain you too much. You'd be, you know, getting yourself so hyped and trying to get everything so perfect. Um, And then actually, you know, I could feel it myself before I'd even go to the match. I'd be snappy at people and, you know, just really tense at home. Uh, And then in in 2017, I think, you know, we'd lost three matches. I'd probably tried to go into an All-Ireland prepping every, every which way. So, um, I was just, I remember just being so relaxed going into it. I think my, you know, I was living with my parents at the time and they were probably wondering why it was so, so easygoing and so relaxed. I think I watched a movie and made breakfast for a few people that morning. And, um, we, we had a kind of a team group presentation, um, that I, I took for the forwards. So, you know, I just remember making a few jokes and, and being very relaxed coming in and, to be honest, it, it was all just about enjoying it and not getting, try not to get too wound up in the occasion um and I think that really I think that just suits the the way that I play I think you know just not expending too much nervous energy and not kind of unnecessarily getting yourself wound up and you know I can remember just even you know going through the warm and getting good warm-up and then allowing myself to calm down and you know not getting too too edgy about um you know the, the meeting of the president you know getting myself my breathing and stuff under control and then you know really enjoying and taking in the the parade whereas before I would have just kind of almost you know been waiting to get it over and done with and making sure I wasn't too too cool and you know trying to stay on my toes and do a few jumps and really just kind of wasting energy I suppose um and probably getting myself out of the zone really more than anything um so yeah I, I think you know it, it stood to me I, I, had a, I had a good match that day and it was something that I just went into from from then on I think personally I just tried to enjoy the day and stay as relaxed as it was I'd have a 
not a strict enough, but I suppose I'd have a kind of very defined pattern of what I'd eat the night before that morning. And I'd pack my bag, the gear that I'd bring um, when I'd eat my meal beforehand. So I think, you know, having kind of that set pattern for every single match just helped me relax into all Ireland final day and meant that there wasn't anything that was too different about it um, by the time that, that I came to it. But again, I think, you know, a lot of that is probably, you know, fortunate to have experienced it before. Um, and look, I suppose when you, you go in 2017, I had nothing to lose from relaxing because sure, we lost three before by doing it the other way. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, it, it, it's something that a few people like Craig said, both males, you know, some of the, from the lads as well. Um, I think Jack McCaffrey said it, that, he, you know, he really tries to almost wind himself down coming into an all Ireland final day because, you know, really the match is never won in the first five or ten minutes. You, you know, you kind of, you just, you, you build into a match. So I think, you know, you have to just, temper that as well coming into it um and I think it's probably something that does come with a little bit of experience I think standing on the pitch or even just running through the tunnel um waiting for the ball to throw in it's such a mixed bag of feelings you know you've obviously got a little bit of nerves you're excited um you know there's a great sound system in, in Croke Park that blares music um throughout and I, I remember I think it was Land of Ray Summertime Sadness was playing um coming through the tunnel I just remember thinking like this is just so much fun like I was like I am so lucky that I get to do that and you know to 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 do this um you hear the cheer of the crowd we've been lucky enough the weather has generally been nice any of the finals that I played in bar 2019 um you know it's just it's such a brilliant occasion it's like if you could bottle it and put that you know put put it you know put it on for sale I'd say it would it would sell out. It's 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 really really special. It's just it's it's a complete buzz. Like you know, it's 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 one that's kind of hard to come down from. To be honest, it it, it goes your way, um, you know, for 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 a good few days. I I played in my first All Ireland final in two thousand and nine. Um, we played against Cork, and we played again in two thousand and ten. I was you know for those years I was a little bit of a peripheral player I suppose I was quite young I was 18 19 playing in those finals um I you know was kind of getting 10 minutes towards the end of the game so um I suppose you know you do feel almost a little bit helpless for most of it you're watching on just willing your team and you're kind of hoping that if you get a chance to go in that you'll you know you'll you'll let them you'll give them a hand um you know, I, I I think I got five minutes at the end of the 2009 final. We were a point down and, you know, unfortunately, um, Cork just held the ball. I didn't really get a chance to have much of an impact. In 2010, the match was was, was really nearly over, um, probably by half time, but it was definitely over by the time that I got on the pitch. So, um, you know, I, I didn't really feel myself that I made a huge contribution to it. But I suppose looking back on it, when, when, when you're, um, I suppose, a little bit of a more established player, you kind of, you really appreciate that like whatever is happens or whatever occurs on all Ireland final day, it's not because of the players that are, you know, the 15 players that are on the team on our final day. It's, it's built from the, the squad matches that you play, the weeks coming up to it, the competition, you know, how you push each other on, the camaraderie, the fun in the dressing room, you know, that the, just the quality of training that there is. So I suppose looking back, I probably, if I could tell myself anything in those years, it probably would have been to, you know, to, to, to be proud and, you know, appreciate the contribution that you've made to those teams. Um, 2014, 2015 and 2016, I suppose 14 and 15, you know, 14, we were probably, you know, extremely happy and proud to be there. Unfortunately, the match went the way it did. We were probably a little bit naive in, in, in throwing a 10 point lead, you know, lead away. Um, but for me, it was my first kind of All-Ireland final that I that I played in as a starter. So it was, you know, it was always going to be quite special. Um, 2015, you know, to be honest, I actually haven't even looked back on that match. For me personally, it wasn't a match that I thought that I played well in at all. Um, so I think just from a, a, you know, from a personal point of view, that was, you know, disappointing. I think to kind of go back and lose again and kind of make the same mistakes again were heartbreaking. Um, and then in 2016, I was, I was a captain that year, which was just a massively proud moment for me and something that I'll always look back on and cherish. You know, it's, it's a phenomenal thing to say that you captained your team and led your team around Croke Park on All-Ireland final day. 
Um, you know, and I remember looking back on that match and just being so unbelievably proud of the effort that the girls put in. Um, you know, they just played their heart out, putting their heads in where, you know, people probably wouldn't put their feet. They were just, they would have died for that ball. And just unfortunately, you know, we, we, we just didn't get over the line on the day again. We probably didn't learn from mistakes before. And it's standing on the pitch at the end of Pro we're all learning a final day in Crow Park. It's said before, but it is just so lonely, you know, to the victor, the spoils and the zone, you know, the double supporters leave, you know, when the the when the other team have gone to collect their trophy, you know, it's all smiles and, you know, elation really on their side. And you just go into a dress room that was filled with such I suppose expectation and excitement and energy and buzz only an hour ago and all of a sudden it's just deathly quiet um you know it's 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 really heartbreaking um and then to come back in 2017 and um you know I suppose for me just that contrast and that I suppose even just the general feeling of that day you know we, we went in there so prepared um you know we knew exactly what we would do for every single eventuality um and we were just so tight as as a group as well I think um you know when we had said I think for me that match is just is so special I think to finally have gotten over the line to kind of just banish whatever demons we had within ourselves of you know whether we were good enough um to to, to achieve an all-earning final um we're gone um just a pure mad elation that happened you know I think we didn't know where to go what to do who to hug I don't think I even actually saw my family after that match it was just you know you kind of just run around in every direction and the noise and the vibrancy and just the joy in the dressing room afterwards with the cup is really really special and then I suppose to be able to have repeated that in 2018 you know it's funny you kind of yeah not a, have a, a little bit more sense but you're kind of conscious you're like no I didn't see my family last time so I'll go over and it was the first thing I wanted to do was to find them and to you know to get um kind of hugs and pictures with them afterwards so yeah look they've just been absolutely phenomenal days um and yeah like I again just so happy to have been able to experience them and I think you know the fact that they've all been so different and the different journeys that I've been on throughout them or something as well that I I think I, you know, I really cherish, and it probably helped me to to celebrate the good days even more. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Um, I think what's brilliant about the the ladies football is there's a countdown timer, so there's there's a there's a hooter when 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 the time is done. So we've been lucky in all of the finals that we've won. Um, you know, we've kind of had a comfort comfortable enough margin going into the final ten seconds. So. You can hear the crowd are crossing the clock and you can hear the kind of countdown start. The five, four, three, two, one. And then the, the you know, the buzzer goes and that's it. It's game over. You're not looking at the ref open. They'll blow their whistle. Um, so, yeah, you can just kind of really kind of just take it in. Um, to be honest, it's such a mixed feeling, especially in 2017. You know, it was just probably relief, exhilaration. A little bit of exhaustion, um, just pure joy. I think nearly every feeling washed over all of us that day. You know, we were, we didn't know whether to laugh or to cry. Um, I think we couldn't really believe that we'd done it. Um, but yeah, it's just you know you, it's just unbelievable. I think you know, to to know that you finally done it to you know get those big group hugs, the big cheers to um you know we get to go walk up the steps of Hogan and lift up the with the trophy is brilliant um but yeah I suppose you kind of you know exactly and you know very sharply how it feels to be on the other team as well so um I suppose I'd always kind of try to take a moment and I think we've you know we've been playing for so long you get to know a lot of the girls that are playing on the other team as well so I always think it's you know something that I always appreciated when I was on the other side is if you know when they took time out just to acknowledge um I suppose the loss that you've suffered and you know how how you're feeling um and the disappointment so I'd kind of always make it a point to to, to try to get over to to you know members of the other team especially whoever you've marked and things like that and just say look you know head up hard luck I know I'm the last face you want to see or you know like I, I know exactly how you're feeling it's you know you, you kind of just hope the ground will swallow you up or you want to just get off this pitch as soon as possible you don't want to stand and watch Dublin go up and lift the trophy and, and give you your three your three cheers but um so yeah that would kind of be something that I always be conscious of as well but yeah like to be honest you know walking around afterwards and, and meeting all the you know the little fans and 
letting them you know hold the trophy or, or showing them the trophy and then again getting in and seeing your family and giving them that first hug as well because you know they they very acutely go on the journey with you you know they see ups and downs and probably sometimes they see more of the ugly side of it than, than your teammates do you know they're kind of your they're almost your your sounding board and you know your your agony ants when things aren't going well so um you know it's, it's great to be able to share share it with them as well and it's kind of it definitely was something that I missed from the from the match last year to, you know it was bizarre to to get in a car and go home and, and meet your family at home afterwards but um yeah look I was I was you know thankful even that we could do that it certainly was probably one of the most unusual championships um that I've played in I suppose um I was going from working in an ICU kind of during the day and at weekends and then um you know hoping I suppose that you wouldn't bring anything home first of all and then into the changing room as well um you know kudos to to our to our medical team and and, and to the management team as well for you know really just organizing everything so well but um I suppose it is you know you do kind of lose that we were we were split up into into three changing rooms we had our meetings in kind of three separate groups so you know you do kind of lose that little bit of you know tight togetherness um we weren't traveling to, to matches together we all traveled individually um there was no kind of eating together afterwards there was no even after a match going for drinks or going for a coffee after training so um in some ways it felt a little bit sterile and I suppose a little bit kind of separated from each other to to some extent um then even just you know we played one match in in um on Halloween actually in uh in Cavan up in Breffney Park and then you know few weeks later we played a you know a match there again and there was we we uh, stopped in a dress in a uh garage beforehand and there was uh christmas carols playing and you know christmas decorations up and we were playing an all ireland semi final it just it felt very strange it was almost dystopian um and then yeah just i suppose the eeriness of even when you came out and I think some of the, you know, with the water breaks, they were, they, I think they did kind of change the the dynamic of the matches a little bit and probably, you know, played probably into the hands more of the kind of more experienced teams who were able to close matches out because it probably took the the momentum a little bit from, from, from the other team away. Um, and yeah, especially the, the, the All-Ireland final day in, in Croke Park, you know, to, to run out to the empty stadium, um, you know, credit to to the to Crow Park and to the Lady Gaelic Football, they did kind of make it, a, a, you know, as as good an occasion as they could of it in terms of just you know banners and flags and messages and things like that. But you know, you kind of you, that's you know the the fun of of all Ireland final day is the noise and the colour and you know because you're not doing it for yourself, you're doing it for your family, you're doing it for the crowd and the people that are there to cheer you on, you're doing it to represent your county and, and when when those things aren't there, it does kind of feel a little bit set back but look, I suppose it, it had been a challenging year for us, you know, we we started training back in January and there we were almost 12 months later, you know, we'd been separated for so long, there was so much uncertainty um, of what would happen so you know, our kind of focus on was that look for this one year, whereas previously our focus would have been on representing our, our, our county and our families. We were like, look, this, this one is for us. This one is for the challenges that we over have overcome as a team. And I think that very much brought us together um, in the lead up to the final. And it was actually just very nice. Once the final whistle went, a lot of the time, you know, everybody kind of separates in different directions, either go to the crowd or to their family, to their friends that are in the crowds. We all just stayed together. Um, you know, we did very nice moments of the pitch, just kind of properly soaking it in and soaking in the afterglow of it. And then even in the changing rooms afterwards, um, you know, there was nowhere really that we had to be. So we just really got to cherish it and, and enjoy it. Um, and look, unfortunately, there was no banquet and there was no night out afterwards. And there was no kind of the usual fun that would go in with an odd out final. But I suppose getting back home to to your family then and kind of reliving it, I suppose, and chatting through it um with them was was really special. Um, but then look, I was back in work the next week um because things were obviously ramping up again and uh that kind of did take the the sheen off it, I suppose, and kind of put reality very much back into into everything. Um, and yeah, look, the 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 three months that followed in work were unfortunately, you know definitely some of the most challenges that I've ever faced you know physically and emotionally um 
but you know I suppose coming towards the end of that the vaccine started to be rolled out and you can see the numbers come back down so you know when you when you look at kind of coming into the into the latter stages of the of the football championship now it kind of seems to be you know this such a stark contrast I suppose to how it finished last year kind of going into the depths of winter with numbers kind of going up and now you see that just the vaccine numbers coming down things look a little bit more positive the weather is very good so yeah it's, it's, it's a big contrast I suppose it reflects a very hopeful contrast um this time around the decision to retire was was a tough one it certainly wasn't one that I took lightly at all um I had moved into Cork in 2019 and I probably thought that maybe that was going to be the year that um I just wouldn't have been able to do it um I'd come off of you know the back of two very good seasons and I think for me to have had to finish it at that stage would felt like it had been taken away from me rather than that either been able to make the decision myself so thankfully um you know my partner and my family Dublin and also the people that I worked with were very accommodating and in, in you know providing me I suppose the, the time to 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 play with Dublin that year um and then you know I struggled a little bit with injury but um you know it was a, it was a brilliant year again and, and one that we you know we got to to, to win the All Ireland final again, and um, you know, personally, it was it was great to then experience um, I suppose winning the club All Ireland final with Moran Abbey, which was such a nice end to to my year in Cork, and it was great to have you know that group and that support and kind of that little community down there as well. It was great to 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 really experience it. Um, but I suppose you know there, there it was stressful and and strenuous kind of getting up and back down the road and trying to balance everything again um you know 2020 I was more than happy to I suppose in my head give it give it one last go and kind of have it more on my own terms to be settled in Dublin and kind of be able to give it a good shot I think I felt in 2019 I was kind of I had one foot in two places and I wasn't really able to give it the the attention that you know I'd like to 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 give an inter-county career and I think that it warrants if you're going to be starting you know you should really be able to 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 dedicate the time that you know you'd expect from your teammates um of course COVID kind of put pay to that in the in the first half of the year and then um coming back um you know uh the condensed championship I suppose the challenges that were going on with work and things like that um but I had it in my head I think that that was was probably going to be my last year I kind of knew just the not the stresses but I think just the organization kind of going behind trying to arrange work and um around training and just you know missing out on things like family or spending time with my partner or you know friends and things like that were kind of starting to wane a little bit and the enjoyment that I was getting out of football kind of wasn't matching with what I was putting into it so um yeah look it was something that I sat on over over the course of the winter to make sure that it was the right decision and um you know I suppose with lockdown I probably delayed and gave me a little bit more time to to think and um I think I knew when the announcement had come in that the um intercounty teams were allowed to be back training I just didn't have that appetite to, to to go back and you know I had the conversation with Mick and he was completely understanding and supportive of it um which was great because you know you, you kind of it, it, it means that I suppose that things um end on a good note from that point of view but I think that you know what I'm just most happiest with and I suppose really lucky with is that I was able to just do it I suppose on, on my own terms and um you know it was a decision that I was able to come with and you know kind of have a lot of I suppose peace with and you know have a kind of peace of mind that I was happy that I'd made the right decision for me. Um, it's definitely been a strange transition I suppose transitioning from player to to medic um, and to backroom team member I suppose you kind of go from you know having captain the team and you know playing with a lot of the girls for so many years and being on the team for I think 13 or 14 years to you know having to take a step back and and you know I suppose you just kind of have to find those boundaries for yourself as well I suppose one of the great things is that you know the girls so well you're not coming into a new team trying to build up new relationships and I suppose for the girls as well I'm someone that they can hopefully feel comfortable with and trust um and know that I've got their best interests you know you kind of you understand the the ethos of the team and you know you respect the, the the team environment as well which I think is important and was important to Mick too um and yeah look it's just been something that I've really enjoyed actually um it's been a really nice way to kind of stay in stay in touch with the girls and to see the girls and 
um look I, I kind of said to Mick if there was anything he ever needed um not to hesitate to give me a shout so it's it's nice to kind of I suppose still be considered useful um in in some ways but uh, yeah look there's a there's a fantastic backroom team there in in, in Dublin so it's it's really enjoyable just to kind of get a sense to to be a part of I was lucky enough to um have played with more Nabi ladies football team when I was down in Cork in 2019 um they were you know generous enough to, to, to let me join and train with them for the year um they'd obviously had a phenomenal journey journey the year before um they won the all Ireland final after having lost it I think nearly four times um so they were coming off the back of that um you know more Abbey's a very very tight um football teams are very close they've had a lot of experiences kind of you know ups and downs together but they've you know they've come through they won junior all Ireland and intermediate all Ireland so they're they're a very tight group but I think to kind of have been adopted I suppose and you know um taken on as one of them um was was brilliant it's a really tight community down there as well um and to have you know really been welcomed um so so well I suppose and so openly um was so nice to experience the games that we played in um you know were, were brilliant there's some of the most exciting games I've played in the the court championship has a brilliant structure there's kind of a um a divisional team where you know junior clubs can, can pull together so we played you know a fantastic team in West Cork it was a really tough match you know a lot of kind of inter-county players playing so it was really it was brilliant to experience that um and then to get to go on the journey then and and um I suppose you know kind of get in and, and in on the rivalry with them and Valley McCarby from Waterford and to, to win a Munster final um was brilliant you know it's, it's funny to say that you've won a Leinster and a Munster final in the one year but uh yeah it was nice to have done it um and then look the, the pure drama I suppose with the all Ireland final was brilliant um you know obviously club is is so parochial um so tight um you know a lot of kind of sisters and family members on both teams so you know you could see how much it meant to, to everybody you know within the community and what the, the club kind of represents for the community as well and I think to to have been able to you know to to win something with them was 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 brilliant but uh yeah look it look it was one of the most exciting matches I think I've I've ever been involved in um I don't think I've ever been involved in in a match that would have had so much I suppose drama you know going right down to the wire to the last minute and then you know for for Laura Fitzgerald to to um you know kick that point in the way she did was brilliant you know you couldn't you couldn't ask for for a nicer girl to have have done it um yeah it was just look it was just great fun it was such a good experience you know to um to to, to get to have done and you know something that like I would absolutely treasure and and, and put on the same level as as the All Ireland finals with Dublin as well and you know the, the All Ireland wins with Dublin as well and yeah it was nice I suppose to kind of put county rivalries aside and and you know really get to, to know the girls and, and achieve something with them as well you know the, the O'Sullivan's and Mermini and uh Morik Allen are, are phenomenal players so you know it's a, it was a privilege to have been able to play with them as well. So this was my two probably most memorable matches. Um, the one for they're both from Dublin. I think the most memorable one, firstly, would have been the All Ireland semi final in twenty sixteen against um, Mayo. It was up in in Cavan in Breffney Park. The, it was a gorgeous evening. I think it was a Saturday evening. Um, there was a real bite to the crowd. Um, and to the to the match as well. It was just snip and tuck the whole way. Re, like we started off very well, but you know Mayo came back into it so strongly um and it was level with with you know kind of the last few minutes I think with the last minute to go I think with the last kick of the ball we played did somebody played a ball down I think DC Collins played a ball down to Sinead Ahern on the kind of outside of the of the of the left um the left wing and she was she was fouled and it was you know buzzer beat her she had a free to take it was a draw game um and I was I was the captain that year and she um yeah, she she nailed it. I think it was probably you know watching the ball go between the posts and knowing that that match was over at that t- time. It was just pure elation. It was you know it was really exciting. It was phenomenal. And then to kind of you know to to know that you were going to be in an All Ireland final again, um, was brilliant. Yeah, it was just pure drama. It was it was a really good match to to be involved in. It's kind of definitely one of my favorite matches that I've played in. Um, and then following on from that, I think look the All Ireland final in twenty seventeen for me was just brilliant as I said before just kind of banishing any of those demons just the shackles coming off and us kind of finally getting over the line was was brilliant um 
I think the manner in which we we won it was really special. We'd kind of said all along that it was always going to be a team effort that had won it. And I think a lot of the time that can fall on deaf ears. But, you know, we lost Sinead Finnegan early on in the match and Dee Murphy came in, did a fantastic job. Sarah McCaffrey came off the bench, scored two goals. Um, you know, Hannah Neal, Molly Lamb coming on, um, setting up goals as well. Fiona Hudson, you know, getting blocks in the last minute as well, real body in the line stuff. So it was just a complete, you know, for me, real team performance and team achievement and it was completely justified I think way to win it given the journey that we'd all been on together for the three previous you know three to four years so um, I think for me that was probably the sweetest one um, that we'd won. Yeah I think that the, there's probably a few pieces of advice um, that I'd give the first one that I gave would be to practice with both your feet <laughs> I think uh, I think develop this the skills of the game as much as you can I think forget about you know fitness and things like that especially when you're younger if you can you know if you've good skills you know it'll get you very very far um, I think listen to your listen to your coaches um, and be coachable is, is important as well um, you know always constantly no matter what stage you're at be willing to to learn and adapt um, and listen to to criticism as much as praise um, and I think then finally is just believe in yourself you know there'll be people who, who think that you're not good enough or you know you may just be a little bit of a of a late bloomer in, in coming on but I think if it's something first of all that you enjoy and I think if it's something that you you know you really want to achieve I think if you if you put your mind to it don't let people set you down just because one person tells you that you're not, you know, that you're not good enough. Um, there's plenty of players, you know, look around, even within Dublin, Martha Byrne, Vernon Brogan never made underage teams. So I think just keep applying yourself and um, yeah, that, that'd be kind of my three main pieces of advice. Looking back, it's, it's almost hard to pick one highlight. Um, I think it's probably more of a just an, a general highlight. I think the transition that we made from being perennial losers, I suppose, to, you know, losing three in a row to kind of turning that on its head, um, you know, winning as emphatically as we did and kind of overcoming that. And then I think, you know, not only overcoming it, but, you know, really going from strength to strength and, you know, changing our whole mindset and really establishing ourselves as kind of a team that's very hard to beat and kind of really believes in ourselves because you know it would have been very easy for us to just you know admit defeat and put the white flag up at kind of any of the stages after we lost our Ireland finals but you know we just persisted and kept at it and I think that for me is probably my biggest takeaway and the proudest thing that I you know kind of could have said is that you know we we persevered. Music